Urte Dumad. I am Ulan, chief of the village of Vignamri. You have a peculiar face, and it looks familiar. I didn't know that people from the continent could bear the mark of the Onol Manawi. To what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? I met a member of your clan in New Serene, a merchant. Oh, so you are the strange Anal Manawi, who helped and saved our hunter. I am very grateful to you. May the trees along your path always bear fruit. I knew the Renaik say could be good. And you proved to everyone that I was right. You are someone that the kings of the Renaik say respect and listen to, are you not? As the legate of the congregation, it is true that I can talk to all the governors of this island. That is what I taught. I need your help to talk to the leader of the great city of Hikmet. About what? I want to meet him to offer a peace treaty between his clan and mine. The Sisagnameus. Many kings want to chase the Renaigse away from the island, especially the kings of Hikmet. But I know we could learn many things from them, and we could arrange a great deal. I see. I can indeed talk to the governor about your desire to make peace. If you do talk to him, can you also tell him that one of my clansmen has come to trade with his town? I sent him some time ago, but I was told that the soldiers did not let him in. He fears for his life. Because some other clans do not look favorably on exchanges with the Renaigse. He could be attacked at any moment, alone on the road. Very well. I will make sure that he obtains permission to enter. What's your destination, milady? Just into town. I'm an emissary of the congregation and I'm here to discuss matters with your governor. Why the checkpoint? We've got orders to verify all comings and goings. The roads are becoming dangerous. Do you have anything particular to report? Nothing out of the ordinary. Well then, good travels, milady. Your names, titles, and business at hand. Lady de Sade, emissary of the Congregation of Merchants on Tier Fredi. I have come to present my regards to your governor. Your papers seem to be in order. Welcome to Hikmet, Your Excellency. to receive such a prestigious guest. You will not regret it. My wares are the best in all Hikmet, and always in the vanguard of progress. You... 
You'd better go and meet this governor without me. We are at war. I'm not certain that I can remain calm if I see such a man. We rarely bow down on our ships. I hope I will not embarrass you. Excellent. It is an honor to meet you. Allow me to present my sincerest regards in the name of the Congregation of Merchants. And allow me to wish you and your cousin a warm welcome to the island, in the hopes that this visit will help prolong the profitable relations between our two nations. Likewise. Nevertheless, another question brings me. The Malachor. The Prince d'Orsay hopes that these new shores will bring us new possibilities, even a remedy. It is an area that concerns us greatly, but be assured we are studying it acutely. Our doctors and alchemists are particularly interested in the flora of the Isle. It's extremely varied and different from our own. In fact, we have sent a group of explorers into a very promising sector. Alas, we've had no news from them for quite some time now. We are hoping that nothing has happened. We would have sent a patrol to investigate, but we cruelly lack the means to do so. The natives have proven aggressive, even hostile to our studies, and have attacked us regularly. You ask the question why? You steal our lands, gouging the earth in sacred places. And now our people are disappearing. It's enough to drive one to unsheath a blade, do you not agree? Siora, please. I understand how you feel, but this isn't the right time. <sighs> I am sorry. You are right. My apologies, Your Excellence. Continue, please. Hmm. Yes. As I was saying, we are obligated to maintain all of our able-bodied men here in order to protect the city. But we would be happy to share with you the results of our research if... Your Excellency... This insolent interruption is untimely and unwelcome. I deeply regret, Excellency, but one of our frontier posts has just suffered a brutal attack. Report then and be precise. The natives attacked us by surprise. Our men were massacred. Our frontier post is lost. One more act of barbary. Dismissed, soldier. Where was I? Yes. We would be most pleased to share our discoveries with our allies if your cousin would send us a party to help us find our lost expedition. I could show you to which region they were sent. I thank you for the information and will let him know. If you are of a mind to accord me another request, I would be truly grateful. I'm listening. As you have not failed to observe, our troops as well as our caravans have been suffering incessant attacks. The merchants, including your own, are raided, often killed, and certain goods have become scarce. Captain Rainhild, who commands our outpost in the plains, has communicated his incapacity to protect them, considering that certain of your own fellow countrymen are involved. You would like me to lend a hand? I will see what I can do, Your Excellency. Would you like to speak with me about any other subjects? I met Ulan, the Bone Blower's clan chief from the village of Vignamri. He is an open-minded man who holds great expectations of exchanges with the colonies. He would like to meet you to discuss a treaty, even an alliance. Ulan, you say? I have never heard mention of this name, but to finally have an ally among the natives could only be beneficial. That is excellent news. Still, I fear that I cannot leave the city. That would be taking too much of a risk. 
I doubt that Ulan will come to Hikmet. He is looking for an alliance, but he is not desperate. Such a gesture would be considered a sign of weakness by his clan. That is understandable, I suppose. Do they grasp the concept of emissaries? Do you think that solution might work? I think that might be possible. I'm sure he would understand that you could not come to see him in person for the same reason. Excellent. Finally, some clear skies in our negotiations with the natives. My right-hand man will then go to this village to finalize an agreement with King Ulan. I'll be there too, to make sure everything goes according to our plans. There is another matter concerning the same village that I would like to bring to your attention. A wandering merchant, member of the Ulan clan, is being kept in your outpost. Can you authorize his entry into the city? I see no harm in that. This merchant is certainly not a threat to us, and he might even prove useful if the negotiations with his clan should take a foul turn. Here, please be so kind as to give him this letter of passage. If he presents it to the guards, they will let him in and he'll be able to establish his stall in town. I thank you. I hope to see you again. I have to go. Look forward to seeing you again. Farewell, my lady. If you come to do business, you should go upstairs. I am but a poor underling. Hello, sir. Is this the house of the man called Farad? It is I. What can I do for you? We're searching for Mr. Darcy. He was supposed to come here to do business. Yes. Yes, he did come here, but I don't know where he is. <sighs> to be honest, our exchange did not exactly go as planned. And if you are his associate or a member of his family, know that you owe me a large sum of money. How so? Well, this Darcy fellow came here to take the shipment, and he was supposed to deliver me a promissory note. Which never arrived, I imagine. How could you let him leave with your merchandise without payment? Well, he's the son of a very well-known family. I did not deem it necessary to try and obtain more guarantees. What if something happened to him? Nothing happened. At least I don't think so. Why should that concern me? I'm not his brother. He owes me money, and I do not have the slightest idea of where he might be. I suspect that you are not telling us everything. Oh, uh, come on. If you have not come to repay his debt, leave me alone so I can work in peace. Greetings. If you have come to do business, head upstairs, if there's any business left to do. Why do you say that? They haven't been paying me and I've had to work with cheap ingredients for weeks. What do you do here, exactly? I create and prepare complex potions. Not simple health potions, but far more subtle things. And if I'm not mistaken, things are not going the way you would want them to. The boss has always been difficult, but ever since he got ripped off, it has been a living hell. I work using leftovers thrown away by all the other alchemists while listening to him screaming at me and everyone else all day. This is no way to live. Have you heard of a man called Bastian Darcy? <sighs> it would be difficult not to. His name is the only thing my boss talks about. Apparently, he did not pay for one of our shipments and still left with the goods. And now my boss makes me work twice as much to compensate for his losses, with ingredients I wouldn't even feed to a pig. And what did your boss do? Well, he spent every waking hour cursing his name. That's how I learned about it. How can a brilliant, conscientious alchemist keep working here? I am certain that any great laboratory in town would welcome you with open arms. So why continue protecting your employer? Oh, you're right. Anywhere is better than here. My boss did not only curse the name of the man you're looking for, he also hired some thugs to find him and our shipment. Interesting. I think we may need to have a few words with your employer. If you could also tell him that I am resigning, then I won't need to go upstairs.
You again. I already told you that I do not know where the man you're searching for is. You may not know where he is, but you did everything you could to find him, didn't you? What do you mean? Does this document ring a bell? You hired some debt collectors to find Mr. Darcy. How dare you rummage through my belongings? You could have taken legal action and retrieved what you were owed, but you sent some killers instead. I doubt the governor would approve. Do you want us to tell him about it? No. But please, understand me. The Darcy family is on the continent. It would take months for them to reply to my complaint. What other solution was there? My shop will not survive this. Tell us who these debt collectors are, and we'll take care of it. They loiter in an alleyway of ill repute, not far from here, in the Science District. That's what I feared. Probably a bunch of cutthroats. If Bastion survives... If he survives, remind him of what he owes me. immediately spotted that you are a real science enthusiast. I have all the potions you could ever dream of. And other things, too. We also sell ingredients, and we even craft on demand. So, what would you like? Have mercy! Have mercy! I will repay everything, I swear. Hey, you! Leave this man alone! What do you want? No one asked you for your opinion, so get lost. Maybe he's friends with the weakling. Maybe. In any case, it seems like he wants to share his fate. You think I'm afraid? I fought uglier people than you. Vasco, let me try to take care of this. How much money are we talking about? You're here to collect a debt, right? Between what he owes our client and our commission, it's a hefty sum. But if you want to pay in his stead, my lady, please do. I don't think you realize who you're dealing with. So, let me introduce myself. My name is Desade. I'm the legate of the congregation, and I'm here to save the life of one of our citizens. If you do not deliver him to me immediately, I will have no choice but to inform the governor. And you'll end up rotting in jail in no time. Damn it, they look serious. Yes, yeah, a bit too much. Listen, we don't want to get in trouble with the governor, so take him! Yeah, if our client wants to get repaid, he'll have to make an official request. Come. Thank you for your intervention. I thought these brutes would kill me. Don't mention it. It's only natural. But how did you end up in such a situation? Oh, I'm certain someone like you, who belongs to high society, will understand. There is a game table here that is attended by the best of the aristocracy. I lost the money I owed to that merchant while playing there. And, since I got out with a few other debts, I had to leave the merchandise as repayment as well. But that's a mere trifle that my father would have paid for without thinking twice. I never would have thought that someone would send these types of brutes after me. What a lack of tact. In any case, I am extremely grateful to you. To whom do I have the honor of speaking? My name is... Captain Vasco. Nought and Sea Given. It was a pleasure, sir. Thank you, Desaudet. My pleasure. But 
Why didn't you tell him who you were? But I did tell him. I was stupid. I resented everyone, and you even more, for the life I didn't get to live. You had it all, everything I thought I was entitled to. But after seeing Bastion, I realized that in the end, I was exactly who I wanted to be. A naught, and a proud one at that. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. No more regrets? No more regrets. And I certainly don't regret not being called Leandra Darcy. <laughs> Hello, Captain. Your Excellency, what can I do for you? Governor Baron has asked me to help you fight against the caravan attacks. Could you tell me precisely what's going on? For weeks we have been harassed by the savages. They're waiting for groups of soldiers or caravans to be out of sight of the outpost and attack with incredible violence. They don't just steal goods or equipment. They kill without mercy. Only one man survived their last attack. He's here in a sorry state. Do you think he could answer a few questions? Yes, but take it easy on him. I'll make sure I do, Captain. Hello there. My name is de Sardé. I'm the Legate of the Congregation. I was informed that your caravan was looted and that you were the sole survivor of the attack. It's true, Your Excellency. It was awful. All those deaths. The violence. We followed the recommended precautions to the letter. But it was useless. How did the attack happen? We traveled all day. We were exhausted. And night was approaching. We knew we were not very far from the outpost, but we couldn't go any further. So we camped away from the road, trying to stay out of sight. Alas, it was in vain. That's when they struck, in the middle of the night. Were there several attackers? I counted five, maybe six. But others were hiding in the woods. I'm sure of it. If they only had their usual stone weapons, we may have hoped to escape them. But their weapons were inflamed. I have never been so scared in my life. You mentioned recommended precautions. Yes. Since attacks occur often, we were given a number of precautions to avoid them. Do not travel at certain times, do not camp near the road, do not light any fires. All of it was useless. It would have been better to recruit guards to escort us. What were you transporting? Mostly food, but also herbs and other ingredients for scientists. Did the attackers take it? Everything was a blur. I don't know if they intended to steal or destroy it. Unfortunately, my companions died while trying to protect our cargo. Are you saying that the looters started by attacking your cargo? Yes, Your Excellency. Maybe more of us would have survived if we'd all fled. Hmm. Based on what you're saying, the attacks were very targeted. They must have a camp near the outpost to monitor the road. But what is their goal? Why attack all the caravans along this route? They must want to cut off the supply lines to Hikmet. We'll go to the scene of the attack. I might find something there to help track these rebels. Keep walking, Renaixe. This does not concern you. Have mercy. They will kill me. I am but a merchant who wishes to trade with the big city. I never thought I would see several Islander warriors attacking a mere merchant. 
And I thought honor and righteousness were of the utmost importance in your culture. I must have been mistaken. What are you trying to say, Renaixe? Are you insulting us? You are insulting yourselves by behaving this way. He's an unarmed man. He's trying to survive. What honor is there in attacking him? He is a traitor. He deserves to be punished. But you are right. He is not worth attacking. Let's leave. His punishment will come once we have chased the Nanaigse away, and he cannot sell his products. Adlo Reda on Almanawi. May the trees along your path always bear fruit. Think nothing of it. Ulan told me that you were not able to enter the town. It is true. The soldiers did not let me enter. They left me outside, and the Donaya Exdragao took advantage of this opportunity to attack me. Rest assured, I have obtained permission for you to enter from the Governor of Hikmet, which should allow you to set up your stall in the city. Ad Loreda Renaixi. Thanks again. Farewell, merchant. Perhaps we will meet again. The caravan was some distance from the road when it was attacked. Here we are. Stay alert. The food has been destroyed. They clearly don't need it, which means that their camp should be close by. They must have died protecting their goods. How sad. These wounds appear to be caused by stone blades. The kind of weapons that islanders use. These crates are empty. Their entire contents have been destroyed. These goods were not meant to reach their destination. They acted quickly, methodically, and then left. Let's look around. Bit of poison on my brain. And let's go!
on my back. He was in the caravan, but whoever attacked him decided to drag him here and feed him to the wild beasts. The Donea Exregal do this as a sort of scare tactic. This is a message for other merchants. on my...
bit of poison. No, my God. And let's go. See if you can ward off this fate! Here's the camp of the rebel natives. The standing men call themselves Donea Exregal. Please, let's try and talk to them. I do not want to fight with my brothers without trying to reason with them first. Hello. Don't worry. I come in peace. I only wish to speak to your leader. I am the leader of this camp, Renaixe. And who might you be? My name is Desarde. I'm the legate of the Merchant Congregation. The Congregation? Are those the Lugayet Blau? The Yellow Eyes? It's possible, yes. We live in the city south of the island. That's right. We hold no grudge against your people. Listening. I have come to speak to you about your attacks against all those who take the road to Hikmet. The Lurians only got what they deserve. They have captured many of our people. We must release them. That's the price of war. If you fight, you risk men being taken prisoner. I am not talking about warriors, Renaixe, but villagers kidnapped in our villages. They mainly attack on all Menawi, those carrying the mark of the bond like you. They capture them, and we never see them again. We don't know what they are doing to them, but we are going to release them. I see. But our merchants have no role in this. They are not warriors, so why kill them? They brought food and weapons back to our enemies. We could not let them pass. If your merchants had fled, we would not have pursued them. But they resisted, so they do it. The city of Loyans is no longer to receive food or weapons. Nothing. In that case, I'm sorry to tell you that you failed. The road is not the only way to transport goods. Many things are transported by sea. Listen, if what you told me is true, I fully understand why you're fighting. I'm even ready to help you clear up these disappearances, as long as you spare our merchants. You no longer need to worry about it. That was our last attack. Our troops are ready, and soon we will make the Luyan pay for the harm it has brought upon us. What are you talking about? Soon, the Donea Exregal will march together, and we will free our brothers. Can you guarantee that our merchants will now be able to take this road without risking their lives? I always keep to my word. The time for small attacks is over. Now is the time of war. I'm afraid you're heading straight into a massacre. But since you promised me that our caravans will be spared, I have fulfilled my mission. Go in peace. We should prepare ourselves. <laughs>